and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Rakdos aggro. That's right, we're switching it up, playing a little bit of a different deck here than what we've played in the past week or so. Got a new one here. Basically, you know like how we played Jun Dinosaurs yesterday and Rotting Regisaur looked really good in the Jun Dinosaur deck. And it's been really good in, in the uh, Vivian Tribal, aka Golgari Stompy deck, that I have been playing as well. So I wanted to try it out in a much more aggressive shell, putting it here in Rakdos to go along with red burn spells and everything, and just and a really low curve. You know, we got 16 one drops here in this low curve. And the thing is, like, you know, Rotting Register, of course, has the downside of making you discard a card. Uh, during your upkeep, but if your hand is empty because you've played a whole bunch of cheap spells, that's not much of a downside. Or the other card that Registor works really well with, of course, is Experimental Frenzy. Because it doesn't matter if you can't play the cards in your hand anyway, who cares if you have to discard one, right? So, like, uh, Experimental Frenzy and Rotting Registor seem to work really well together, fit perfectly together. So, I wanted to try those um, together, and this is what we got. Um, as you can see here, I got like one Remodi Reveler as another two drop and one Judith, the Scourge Diva in here. Uh, I think Judith works, uh, pairs well with all of these uh, one drops, with the 12 one drops. Um, but I didn't really want two Judas. I didn't really want, um, I don't want just like, if I, because if we played two Judas, we'd have like a bunch of threes. And I wanted another two drop, so I just have one Reveler. I thought about playing a Steamkin. Instead of a Reveler. But I ended up here with the Reveler. Um, but yeah, I kind of just want another two-mana creature um, there. Could play Steamkin. So that's, you know, not sure. Um, anyway, this, this is what we got. We're going to give it a try. We got some Blood Suns in the sideboard. And Duresses for, like, the, the Scape Shift matchup. Of course, Legion's End is one of the best cards against Vampires. Um, I... Could see that it, like playing only two Legion Sends is not enough, honestly. But we got a bunch of Lava Coils in here also, as other removal spells that can hit, you know, like everything, like Champion of Dusk and Sanctum Seeker and everything. Um, but yeah, let's give this a try. This is something a little different. Hey, what's up, good brother? I do like some Embodiment of Agonies. I actually have been pretty impressed with that card, playing that in the Kalia deck. All right, so I'm going to play Rakdos Aggro over here in rank. You can see that's with the R stands for over here is whenever we play a deck in ranked. This one looks pretty strong. I feel pretty good about it. So I'm going to go ahead and try it on over there in ranked and see how it does. Angrath is, is for, um, you know, matchups that are going to go longer. Like basically Esper Control. So we got some Angrath for that. Like Angrath is just a really, really good Planeswalker. One I'm, one I'm happy to play. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You're the first person to, to tell me that. I typed that out pretty quickly, of course. Didn't add the extra S there on colorless. No, the Mystic Forge deck, uh, we're playing that later on. That's the, the Esper colorless. That's the Mystic Forge deck. It's Esper colors because it's it's blue-black for Tezzeret. You know, big six-mana Tezzeret. Um, and then... Which also means you get Thought Erasure. So, like, so Tezzeret Thought Erasure with the blue black, but you also want like good removal as well. So there's just there's Kai's Ras in the deck also. So those are the only colored spells in the whole deck. Well, in the the main deck are um, Thought Erasure, Kai's Wrath, and Tezzeret, and then the rest of the deck is colorless because of Mystic Forge. Oh, Risen Reef. Okay, okay. That's what we're doing these days, huh? Uh, but no, I didn't. I didn't really consider Embodiment of Agonies. I I talked about that just a little bit ago. I have been impressed with that card. Um, but our our list is pretty tight here. Yeah, it, it would be like. A one of over Judith, but I, I think I'd rather play Judith. Yuck. Where are the lands at? Somebody's saying we had too many lands in this deck. Doesn't seem like it. Hmm. 
Yeah, <laughs> we're just a two land deck. This is a pretty cool M20 sleeve, though. I like this sleeve. Alright, so elemental ramp. Do I want Blood Suns in here? They're going to have like Cavalier Thorns, which is going to be a, a Cavalier Thorn in my side. So if we play Noxious Grasp and Blood Sun. I think I can cut one of these creatures. You can probably just like cut the Reveler and then like one of these one drops. Or maybe even the Butchers. Like maybe on the draw I'm not supposed to play Butcher. Yeah, they may not have Scape Shift, but they're definitely going to make a bunch of Zombies. All right, next question. Do I want Coil? Coil over Firebrand? I probably want to keep Firebrand. Legion's End? I guess Legion's End does exile Zombies. That's good against mana creatures, too. All right, I'm going to take out Gutter Bones and play Legion's Ends and Coils. Basically turning into a black-red control here and gonna have Frenzy take over, give us a lot of card advantage and stuff. All right, there's our two lands in our deck. That's all we got are just those two. So I'm leading with Knight instead of Firebrand because next turn then we can go like Firebrand plus Knight. If we start with Knight here. Selesnia Guildgate. This does look like a Scape Shift deck. Maybe it's not element maybe it's not ramp creatures. I was thinking like ramp creatures with the sideboarding and everything. You know, of course if we lose we'll have more information for Game three sideboard plan. Oh, Hawkeye, they can't see you. Go right there. Could have shocked there and grown this other Knight of the Ebon Legion to be a 2-3. I don't know if that's that necessary. <laughs> yeah, we sideboarded in a swamp. Ooh. That thing is pretty big. Hmm. Oh. 
<clears throat> so option either activate knight, do five to them, grow the two knights, or just play rotting regisaur. I'm gonna play the rotting regisaur. This will this would be fine if we draw a land. I don't really want to discard the Frenzy. Like, if we draw a land next turn, I can go land Frenzy. Maybe I'm maybe I'm supposed to just shock the Risen Reef and discard the Frenzy. Okay, no, they'll, they'll have a chump blocker either way. Yay. Thing is big. All right, well, with them getting another field of the dead, with them getting another field of the dead, um, they don't get to. How did they get a third one? Where did the third one come from? Oh, the Risen Reef trigger was a third one? It's a ripoff. Well, we got to dig towards Blood Sun or... Blood Sun and Legion's End. Get back Krasis. So yeah, I know I could activate the Knight and kill the Cavalier Thorn and give him a Krasis. I'd rather keep digging. Okay. We need to find Blood Sun real bad. Speaking of, so I probably need to destroy my frenzy so I can legions end this crisis. We'll see, though. Yep. Definitely gonna have to Legion's End the Crisises. My knights were two threes.
All right, so we got all four Krasises. So it looks like maybe we just like, kind of have to deal with Cavalier of Thorns now. Yeah, and we got the one from the graveyard also. So we got the two in play, the one in there. They had the third one in the hand, and then they had the fourth one in the graveyard. Yeah, that was a great Legion's End. Down, down. So we'll see if they have anything else that's big. Is this stuff we can handle? Really wish these knights were two threes. That is a pretty that was a pretty clutch legion's end. You know, even getting rid of the one in the graveyard, so like when Cavalier or Thorns dies, it doesn't come back. <laughs> now I want to make an elemental bird tribal deck. Our opponents like look at look at their cards like why don't these do stuff? These are supposed to do things. Ooh, all right, mill over five more, and risen reef trigger six more. We're closer to milling them out. They're down to sixteen cards. Down to fifteen cards. Uh, is this deck rotation proof? Not exactly. Uh, Lightning Strike, Blood Sun, obviously the Blood Sun's in the sideboard, and Lightning Strike, and then Fanatical Firebrand. I think that's it. Ooh. Land drop here? Yeah. That's good. Be able to activate this knight. That's good. There's not much in this deck that's rotating, though. Basically, just Firebrand, Lightning Strike, and then Dragon Skull Summit in the main deck. And then just the Blood Suns in the side, the Blood Suns in the Angrath in the sideboard. Oh. Yeah, that's it. That's really close. It's not like Blood Suns are going to be a card that you need after rotation, I don't think, anyway. It's just like something that you need right now, though. And they're just continually pulling out cards. They're down... They don't have many cards left. It is a May, like they don't have to grab a land and put it into play. I'm kind of assuming for for how field how much Field of the Dead's dominating here, I'm assuming that in the next set. Um, there's going to be some card in there or and or cards that are good against Field of the Dead. All right, we'll coil a zombie. Play not another Rotting Registrar.
They're down to eight cards. So we have 24 cards, they have seven. I know my responsibility. Well, there's one blood sun down. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. <laughs> we were gonna have to discard it to the rotting register. They're down to six cards though. So I can kill to I can kill Teferi with the Firebrand. There's just one damage instead of two. All right, Blood Sun, heck of a card. Two O against Elemental Scape Shift. Well, I guess we didn't really see Scape Shift, but Elemental Field of the Dead. <laughs> yep, that was the moment there. Killed two more creatures. Determined it was going to be too hard for them to get damage through. Pretty soon, I was about to start attacking. But <laughs> yeah, seen an aggro deck winning by locking slash attacking the, your opponent. Yeah, I don't see that too often. Wait, is this the same opponent I just played? Is it? Mirko? Kind of looks familiar. Yeah, it's a it was a red red card that was completely unplayable is somehow the perfect counter against um the green card that used to be completely unplayable. Two firebrands. Okay, I played against somebody named Ma Matty, and now it's Mirko. Okay, so they were both five letter words that started with M, but different opponents. Hmm. Considered like attacking and then trying to light up the stage again and hitting a, a red source and then going butcher. No, th theater fours is nowhere near the power level of frenzy. We saw that that last game, Frenzy was was incredible for us. The Airforers would have been nowhere nearly as good as Frenzy was in that last match. Like that last game, we we would have lost if we had Theater Fours instead of Frenzy, and we won. We had Frenzy. I 
just that last game was just evidence of how good Frenzy is. Um, yeah, I, I don't know too much about Is It Phoenix, honestly. That's not a deck that I've really played very much of at all. Um, yeah, I just I don't know very much about Is It Phoenix, honestly. Maybe there's somebody in chat that can help you out that, that knows more about Is It Phoenix, that plays it more and has been having more success with it. <clears throat> all right, so we're playing against Nexus. So we're going to want all these duresses. And Noxious Grasp kills Tamio, I suppose. Um, do I want Angrath against Nexus? Nexus isn't really like an experimental frenzy matchup. Because the, the game's just over too fast, usually. Blood Sun's really not that bad here. That is true. Like, as Kanta and and they they rely on um, what's it called? Uh, Blast Zone. And as Kanta, the Memorial Genius. It's really not that bad. If we go with this. I like this. No, I would not main deck Blood Sun if you're playing this in best of one. No, I would not. Unless there's a lot of scape shift in best of one. Then I would think about it, but no. I don't think I wouldn't. Um, yeah. Got Firebrand turn one, turn two, light up the stage. Maybe we hit like Duress also. Like maybe we hit like Duress off the light up the stage to play turn two as well. The heck is that? All right, do I sack Firebrand to light up the stage? Probably not. Not this turn. Maybe next turn. I do want light up the stage to hit land drops for me. That's a bad draw for me to see. These chemistry's insights. Not what I want to. <clears throat> my opponent to be playing. Well, a bunch of card advantage that doesn't really help us. Land. Good.
Yeah, night night will help us out here for sure. So I think I just take Ethergoth so that my Angrath is good. I could see taking Chemist's Insight because that's worth two cards, though. Um, yeah, I, th I think I just do this because I, I want this Angrath to be good next turn. It was just really slow for us to set up here and start pressuring them. I, I don't I don't love where we're at. Yeah, but it's still worth two cards instead of them casting the chemistry's inside and then and everything. I would like to ask about any lunar anomalies you have experienced. I think you will find my notes helpful. No fire, no steel. So down to nine. Hmm. I know I noted this somewhere. Dang. Let's see. That Sir Eulin Drake really isn't that good against me. I just I have like four creatures, but I had those <laughs> four creatures. I can't really get better against Sir Eulin Drake because these are like all red cards. I mean, I could play Legion's End for it. Do I play a Legion's End over a Lightning Strike? I mean, if it helps Dreadhorde Butcher get through, it could be worth it. All right, Storm, have a good night.
I'm gonna play one Blood Sun, not two, and play the Legion's End. Well, Fry doesn't do like Fry wouldn't do anything in this matchup. Fry doesn't kill Tamio. Fry doesn't kill Sir Ulan Drake. We Fry is just the worst noxious grasp right now. The best control deck at the moment. Um, it's probably, I mean, it's hard not to say Esper. I'm going to be making... I'll have an updated Grixis list for Friday. That I'm going to make a Grixis that's really tuned towards beating... Um, Scape shift and, and vampires. Crixus can definitely do that. And so I'll, I'll work on that. That's, I'm going to have that on Friday. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to start Throwback Thursday. That I'm going to do. I didn't realize I had that camera down so much because of. Um, like how we're doing. We're doing rotation proof Mondays for decks that are rotation proof. Also, like the other the other coin the other side of that coin. I'm going to do throwback Thursdays where I'll be making decks with cards that decks featuring cards that are going to that are like going to be rotating out that never really got their shine, you know. So I'll be going through rares and mythics through the four sets that are rotating and and building building decks around the cards that didn't get to um didn't get to see their didn't get to have their day in the sun. So that'll be that'll be a lot of fun. So uh, I'm talking about cards like like Rowdy Crew. I know I know I'm gonna build around that card for one of them. You know, like nobody plays Rowdy Crew. You know, Dreadshade. Yeah, yeah, Dreadshade. That's a good one. Um, you know, cards like that 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 didn't get to see their love at rotation. I'm gonna keep duress and get, gonna discard the other two. Zero one one zero one with that huge cheers. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay, let's see. If I take the other Wilderness Reclamation, they can go Nexus. Take the Nexus. But I'm glad I glad I kept the dress. That was more useful than Red Rotting Red Store would be, and then Noxious Grass would get discarded this next turn. Phylactery Lich. Vance's Blasting Cannons. There's so many good ones. You know, those cards just didn't get, didn't get to see nearly enough standard play. And so that's what I'm going to do is I'm, tomorrow. That's what I'm going to be 
doing all day is I'm going to kind of go through arena, kind of go through all the rares and mythics, see what really catches my eye and, and build around them. And so that'll, that's what we'll be doing on Thursdays in, in August year. Throwback Thursdays. So they're they're not taking lethal right now. Unless we draw something, draw any damage source. Damage source. Land. All right, well, they have four new cards and, like, infinite mana. And they have the Memorial Geniuses that draw them a lot more cards. I I would be very surprised if we win this, basically. Our, our opponent's going to have to really whiff for us to win this. No, I, I haven't thought... I haven't really considered doing Gates... With Ram and Colossus and again. No, I haven't really. Data. Seek and find. Whiff. Whiff. Yay, they whiffed. Good sign. Good sign. I don't think Gates would destroy Scape Shift. I Yeah, I don't I don't think Gates would beat Scape Shift. It could be a pretty big underdog. Gates doesn't have, like... Like, Gates would would not be able to stop Teferi at all. Which is the real problem in Scape Shift. Can't stop... Can't really stop Teferi. You know, like... Scape Shift just ramps, you know, to 7 or 8 mana. And then plays their 2-card combo, Teferi, Scape Shift, and it's over. And I don't, I don't think Gates is fast enough to beat that. Ooh, that's it then, right? Did they, did they Nexus? No, they didn't Nexus, right? Yeah, they tapped out. They whiffed. Yeah, more dinos. Let's get more dinos on the battlefield. Here, you attack Tamio. Get Tamio off the battlefield. We need more dinos, less Tamio. All stories must end. All right, two and zero. Oh. Rank up. But if Scapeshift doesn't have those kind of hands, and you know Gates of Blaze, you get Gates of Blaze and Clarion. I guess that is. I guess Gates is probably pretty good against everything else. It just loses to to Ramp and then to Fairy plus Scapeshift, same turn. But besides that, it, it's probably good against the the worst. You know, like the the not as good hands for Scapeshift. All right, pretty cool little Rakdos hand here. Start with some, start with some bones. Esper. I 
I don't know. Maybe I should light up the stage there. No, no, I shouldn't light up the stage. No, I should. Yeah, I should play the knight because I want the two creatures in play because of yeah. There we go. Little Teferi bouncing. Um. Are they gonna just go Kaya's Wrath? Oh well, I'm, I mean, this knight's just gonna go away anyway. I'm pot committed. They better not have like Hero of Precinct one on turn two and then Kaya's Wrath on turn four. That'd be a huge jerk, mo jerk move. More like average at best, Guard Mage. Hmm. I know, sick burn over there. <laughs> It's a pretty good one drop. It's not a bad one. Well, they got my pretty good one drop. Hostage Shaker is great. Oh no, I said this this guard mage. More like average at best guard mage. Yeah, it didn't shock because before they untapped, um, come on. It's like I wouldn't mind them like keeping their mana up. For it. And everything, and I just wanted to, to see if there was something else to use that that shock for. Man, Get, got completely wrecked by hostage taker. Completely wrecked by Hostage Taker. I am not going to sit this one out. At least the Hostage Takers are gone now. I'm glad they're I'm glad they chump locked with the Hostage Shaker so they don't get to just bounce Hostage Shaker with the Fairy and replay it and and re wreck me.
<laughs> I know, I haven't, yeah, I haven't seen Hostage Taker in, in ages, and yeah, we pick up. Yep, pick up like one mana aggro, creature aggro deck, getting wrecked by a Hostage Taker. Whatever, whatever deck you start playing, you just get paired against something that wrecks you. That's life. It's the Curiosity rule of MTG there. I'm gonna discard the Remadi Reveler, I think. Sorry, that doesn't make sense, Elijah. It should it should be there. I don't know why it wouldn't. Don't worry. I got this. Hey Chris, yeah, Secrets sometimes I miss modern too, but you. I am engrossed in the standard format and everything. I have still do do the homebrews and everything. I just do homebrews in standard now, not modern anymore. I don't really know how we're going to beat the Ugin. Maybe, you know, like, like probably our best chance here is, fr is like, finding a Frenzy and going crazy with Frenzy. And, you know, getting them. I mean, honestly, all we need, like, they're at eight. So I guess all we need is eight points of burn. We still have four lightning strikes and one shock. We only have one shock left, but. <laughs> Oh, yeah, maybe it's just a computer thing. I'm not sure. I've got time. <clears throat> no, not Othakaya. That's going to make our, our life harder. Okay. We need Frenzy. So it's the only thing that, you know, it's the only card power level wise that we can have right now. Frenzy. Nope. It's like attacking, like, really isn't even that enticing. Considering they get to put a whole bunch of cards in their hand. I've got it. Yeah, and of course Knight Knight does trade with Rotting Regisaur. This is over, though. 
Ugin and Hostage Taker. Beaten up by Hostage Taker that really slowed us down, and then Ugin just wins the game. Another. Be gone. Oh, yeah, because Ugin just kills Frenzy also. And yeah, I, I'm pretty dead. Frenzy. Yeah, we need like a frenzy and do a frenzy and I don't know. I'm just picking it up. All right, so this is our Angrath matchup. Hmm. Yeah, Hostage Taker is just going to kind of wreck me. I mean, I'll have the lightning strikes, but that's about it. Let's get all these duresses in here. Try to stop Ugin and Teferi and Othakaya and that kind of stuff that way. I'm going to take out Shock. I guess if they do go crazy with Hero of Precinct 1, could have Legion's End. And obviously Ugin making a whole bunch of 2-2s. I don't, even, I don't even know if the Ugin 2-2s have the same name. They're just named Morph. I'm not sure. I'm gonna cut one 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 drop. What's my worst one drop? Is it I guess it's gutter bones. Alright, gutter bones out. Oh yeah, because they're tokens. They're not they're not morph creatures. They are they're tokens, so yeah, they should yeah, they should be the same. All right, we're gonna be aggressive here. That's our deck. Be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. If I draw a land next turn, I could do the draw three. No, I'm just playing this and discarding the swamp. Darn it. Should have discarded lightning strike. Nah. It's definitely discard swamp. Let's slow this down. Let's try this. I mean, if they have, like, Cry of the Carnarium or Kaya's Wrath, I'm going to want to do this. Well, it does set me back quite a bit. Takes up my whole turn here. Hmm. I mean... This is like my best case scenario is playing this thing. Two Kaya's Wraths.
It's only a matter of time. Yeah, they just have three three pairs there. Two Thought Erasure, two Teferi, two Wrath. Land's good, that lets us pick up the gutter bones again. Mm. That's really good hero precinct one. Remorse. I'll show the straight. That's more like it. All right, Frenzy. Start helping me out here. No, I am not making this up as I go. This isn't a fight you can win. <laughs> Esper just doesn't. They never just don't have good cards, do they? It's always good cards all the time. Doesn't look like they they've drawn lands. You know, they didn't play a land last turn. Looks like they just, you know, have a hand a grip full of spells there. No time for a break. Doesn't do any damage because the disfigure. But we got them down to four. Let's take it back. Four is not that many cards. Or four, four is not that much life. Sorry, that's what I meant to say.
guess killing this thing changes the clock, I guess. Like, I'll play Riding Regisaur, they bounce the Regisaur. I play Butcher and Knight. Yeah, I have I have burn left laying around, but that should that should draw me another that should that'll buy me another turn because they had seven power here, so like that's like that's gonna buy me another turn. Presumably. Keep up the pace. Hey, Carrot. Glad to have you here. Yeah, you see, you took a version of the this Golgari Stompy deck to get to Mythic idea. for the first time this season. Congratulations. I am really happy to hear that. Good job. All right, so no bounce spell there from them. Um, I am all for that. They do gain so much life with that Kai's Wrath. Time for Plan B. As soon as I think of one. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice to have a, a cool card sleeve for Region Mythic, but I mean, you well, you kind of do. If you get, you have to get to the the, you have to end the season in the top thousand in Mythic, and then you get a cool card sleeve because how it works is because then you get qualifications for the next, um, the next Mythic Championship qualifier that's on Arena, and for playing in that, you get a card sleeve. So yeah, Kaya, you gain life equal number of creatures destroyed this that you control that were destroyed this way. So they gained a lot of life from destroying their own creatures with Kaya's wrath there. Spearmall Frenzy is our best best card that we can have here, but you know it's kind of tough against these Teferis. Wow. 
they are willing to tuck you need to slow down and get rid of big teferi i really hope that doesn't mean they drew another big teferi <laughs> that cat meow got Hawkeye up. But I don't want to die. Try this. Gosh, they did just have another big Teferi. Sorry, I'm late. Hurry! This deck's really good against aggro. This one, the, this Esper version that we're playing here. All these hostage takers, disfigures. Like, there's not a bad card against aggro in here. It's definitely anti-aggro. Gotta give it to him. GG's. Alright, anti-aggro Esper. Pretty good against my Rakdos deck. No, yeah, prep coin makes a lot of sense that um, Grixis is kind of more the underdog version of Esper, which is why people like it more. But yeah, with Dragon God is just as devastating as like uh, um, Teferi. Open and draw like a, a black red land there. Let us double spell. Hmm. Gonna need some more mana. And then just two. It is good that they played the the Plaza of Harmony 
before having the gates. That's good for us. Ah, uh, no land there. One of the lands, because I wanted to be able to activate Knight of the Ebon Legion here. Because activating Knight of the Ebon Legion would have dealt another 3 damage, and then I would have had lethal with the lightning strike afterwards. That's what I wanted. So that, like, we wouldn't have to worry about escape shift. But I guess escape shift would gain life, though. Next escape shift. Fun. Is this their end step? No, that's just lit up. Oh, I guess when it's the extra turn, does it just... Is it just this thing's lit up? I think our opponent has a little bit more lands than we do. A little bit more mana. So it is escape shift. Blast zone, of course, is going to be blowing up my Knight of the Ebon Legions. And you just draw a burn spell. Not a burn spell. Of course, Dreadhorde Butcher counts as a burn spell, right? Like Dreadhorde Butcher Ugh, would have finished the game off as well. Did not use Blast Zone. Not yet, at least. Yeah, or Fire... Yep, so Firebrand, Butcher, Shock, Strike. Any of those, 16. Except for we've drawn one Shock and one Strike, so 14 others. Let us have a storied battle worth retelling. Judith wouldn't work. No, Judith wouldn't have worked. I have 
learned much from my ancestors. We'll see how many gain life lands our opponent has. That last turn, Judith wouldn't have worked, like, because they could just blow up the knights in response to playing the Judith, and Judith doesn't have haste or anything. That's game, though. All right, so Legion's Ends, a bunch of Duresses, Noxious Grass, Blood Suns. And take out Gutter Bones. Oh no, Gutter Bones did kind of good there. It, I think, oh, I guess it's is a Butcher. Maybe it's Butcher. Yeah, I took out Butcher last time. Butcher, Reveler, Judith. Maybe it's both. Nah, shocks aren't very good. Yep, Elementals, Scape Shift, and... Nexus all together, just all the broken stuff together here. Hmm. These light up the stages aren't doing anything without any creatures. It's a weird hand to mulligan, but it doesn't do anything. I'm going to get rid of Strike and Firebrand. I guess Blood Sun's more important than Rotting Registrar, I guess. Is that even true? Maybe it's Rotting Registrar. Uh, Riding Red sort of just makes us, you know, discard, you know, like our lightning strike and make it like pretty hard to to play stuff. Darn, that's not good. Risen Reef hitting land.
I don't like my chances here against six cards over there. Oh, that's weird, Elijah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what, why it's saying that. I don't know. That's weird. Grazer is pretty awesome against me right about now. Legion's End would be a good one to find, because where there's one crisis, there's probably more. Not a good frenzy turn there. A bunch of lands. I'm glad I lightning strike the other the other risen reef about now though. Hey six one nine. some <laughs> bad frenzy turns all the lands all the lands end. Yay.
No, experimental frenzies don't stack in any way. Gutter bones hasn't been spectacular. No, it hasn't. It's it's been a, one of the lower impact cards in our deck, for sure. Too many Risen Reefs. <laughs> yeah, clearly the... Yeah, good good call. Clearly, clearly Frenzy Stacks. Look at them all sitting here. Hey, Timideo. The Cavalier of Thorns, of course, is a, a pretty big problem because I can't, I can't kill Cavalier of Thorns because it gets back Hydroid Crasis. All right, well, this is something that can kill Hydroid Crasis now. The the Noxious Grasp. So now I could. We had to get rid of both our our frenzies though to be able to cast that, of course. Don't really need to cast this other light up the sun light up the stage over here. So I need to blow up my frenzies. So I can kill Krasis. My opponent has 23 cards left. I have 24 cards left. I don't I don't understand the double block.
So it's basically does Krasis draw a Nexus of Fate? Since I since I tapped mana. If it's Krasis into Nexus. Then I lose. Why not double pumping the knight that did face damage? Because I because I killed the two O three blockers by pumping the other knight. By making it a four five death touch, like so I get rid of the two O threes instead of doing three damage. That's that's definitely worth it with how the O threes can block and everything. Just got rid of both of them for the, at the cost of three damage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, three, four, five, six. Kept five mana up. That's good. That's no. Fr that's no. No nexus. But obviously they could have like Autumn Veil, vale, Negate. They could find something like that though too here. But I'll have I'll have some more looks off the top of my library for another. Legion's end. Perfect. Next L is the one from the graveyard, too. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Man, Blood Sun is like so necessary these days. I guess Ancraft is awesome against Krasis. When we saw Krasis being a real big problem, maybe I should play Ancraft. Just very good against Krasis. These gutter bones just haven't been doing anything. If they're playing all O3s, these gutter bones just don't do anything. Also. I don't really want to play any of these cards though. We got to we got to choose two of them. Do I just play two shocks? Just two shocks to kill Risen Reef. That's probably the best card. I don't really lot I don't know if I want a lava coil of 3s, but I guess maybe lava coil is better than shock. Because Lava Coil could also, like, get rid of a 4-4 four, four Krasis. Or it is useful for, for Cavalier, too, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I should I should have played Lava Coil. should have played a couple Lava Coils. But, man, Experimental Frenzy. Even though the first couple of Frenzy turns weren't good, it, it got us there. We got that. We found a Legion's End just in time before we died. We were really lucky. We'll see if we can get lucky again. Lands and spells. All right, good enough, I suppose.
That's a terrible spot to see Legion's end right there. Terrible spot for Legion's end. Hey Vitellius. Day's going good. Let's keep looking for, for Blood Sun. So my plan here was to light up go light up the stage and have duress and stuff, look for Blood Sun. But it is certainly It's very tempting to play this Rotting Regisaur, and I'm gonna do that. Rejuvenator is just like the perfect card, you know, chump block and ramp. Such a great card for this deck. That one's rotating out, thankfully. This and Circuitous Route are like those low-key cards that people don't complain about, but they're like the cards that make the other ones so good. All right, so I'm assuming my opponent put in some enchantment removal here. So I kind of wish I would have duressed first. So the Cavalier could get another Cavalier. I kind of have to discard Rotting Regisaur. Yeah, because I'm going to go Duress Frenzy. Ugh, wish I would have got rid of that. Crisis for, for, for five. All right, that doesn't kill Reggie, but they can double block a Reggie now.
All right, they're down to five. I think I just shock right now because we could hit a land underneath. But I, I wanted to do this first, have them do their Cavalier of Thorns thing. I mean, I could shock on, a, on like their turn or on upkeep, of course, also, but I want to see if there's a land on top. Ah, duress. Man, close game here. Can we, f can we finish off our opponent? We don't have any shocks in the deck. I, I took, or no, I, I put in two shocks. That's right, we just drew a shock. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So we, we still have the four lightning strikes. So we have four lightning strikes and one shock. As far as lethal burn spells are concerned. Do I want to kill Cavalier of Thorns? Could I kill Krasis? I think I want to kill Krasis to just slow my opponent's ability down to kill me. The problem with doing that, though, is like, you know, Cavalier of Thorns, you know, they can suicide in with Cavalier of Thorns and, um, you know, I block, they get the Krasis back kind of thing. All right, just two cards over there. This is a good sign. These are all cards that we can beat. These are all cards we can beat. So close. We're getting there. I can't attack. I can't let the Cavalier of Thorns die.
I guess it's lethal. Legion's End only hits creatures CMC two or less. You can't you can't hit Cavalier with Legion's End. Man, it's been a really, really long league. <laughs> I didn't mean to sound sad there. All right, so I think we're just going to stop there at the, after the four games because that was that was pretty long there. And our Esper Colorless deck isn't going to be winning games very fast either, so I want to give time for that. So we'll stop here at four matches. A good 3-1, good showing for our Rakdos aggro deck. Uh, I think what, a couple of things we learned is that, I mean, didn't really learn it, but we just know that Legion's End is just awesome. Like, it's it's just incredible these days. Honestly, we should have a Legion's End in the main. That's our other two drop instead of that, instead of that Reveler. I think we should just have another Legion's End in this deck. Um, yeah, that's that's one thing I'd want to change with there. Uh, yeah, Blood Sun was certainly MVP those last games there. But, you know, even against, like, the other aggro decks. Legion Zen's just kind of good against all the decks that are being played right now. Um, even, like, even the Esper deck that we lost to, it would get rid of Hero, um, even in that matchup. But, yeah, we did face that one complete complete anti-aggro Esper. That, that one, um, that one was rough, but... But our deck looked very good in the other ones. Experimental Frenzy was incredible. It definitely won us um, a good amount of games there. You know, we played against two different... Uh, one against two different Field of the Dead decks, thanks to the Blood Sun Experimental Frenzy combo. Um, there. And, uh, yeah. Just a pretty cool little deck here. You know, Rotting Register, Knight of the Oven Legion, those are definitely some big creatures. They do their thing. Um, but yeah, a pretty good little aggro deck. If you're somebody who likes aggro, if you're sad that like mono red hasn't been pulling its weight, maybe give this a try. We, we definitely did better with this than what we did with mono red the other day. This felt better, like having knight and regisaur that just got to be, you know, so big and everything like that. Uh, gutter bone. Yeah, we don't really need sacrifice stuff for gutter bones. Um, but it didn't feel, it didn't feel great. Um, it, it wasn't, it was, it's probably, it's, it's maybe the weakest card in the deck. I do want to just get, like, I, I like having, like, the one-drop creatures, though, because, like, the thing about Frenzy and, and Rotting Register, these cards want you to empty your hand, right? So, like, you want a, you want a whole lot of cheap stuff to empty your hand. But if, you know, like, I, I think this is better than, like, uh, than uh, whatever the other one-drop's called. Um, not Fanatical Firebrand, but... Um, where's it at? That thing. Footlight Fiend? They both start with Fs, so I forget about it. I think it's better than Footlight Fiend. Um, so that's about that's about it. I mean you could play Lava Runner. I don't I think Gutter Bones is better than Lava Runner. Because there are times, you know, like playing Gutter Bones on turn one and then you know you start attacking for two, that's nice. So there's definitely times like that it's nice. But it's not it's not spectacular. Yeah, there's the Death Touch Lifelink Vampire also. I think Gutter Bones is is better than those cards. And Gutter Bones helps against removal heavy decks for sure. If you don't have Frenzy in play. I think it's better than the other options. Um, yeah, we just... This uh, Bant Tribal, that's a Vanifar deck. Hera Boys. Yeah, that's that's my best uh, Vanifar deck. Um, but there we go. Rakdos Aggro, pretty cool little deck here. We just played in, in Ranked. So if you're watching the video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. And if so, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. But thanks for watching Rakdos Aggro, and I'll see you for the next video.